I actually like don't like a lot of the 12 seeds this year, but I do like Grand Canyon. What's up, everybody? Nick Costos here, back with the Board of Spreads. Now, this is the NCAA Tournament Edition, Tournament Edition of the Board of Spreads. Maybe we'll call it the, the Bracket of Spreads, whatever. Uh, we last spoke before the big game where Kansas City took down San Francisco, a winner for yours truly. So we're looking to take those winnings and let's win some more here on the NCAA Tournament. March matchups here, courtesy of the King of Sportsbooks, BetMGM. And we pay homage to the Board of Spreads, as always. Here's how this is gonna go. We're gonna go through each of the four regions in the NCAA tournament and right now I'm going to give you best bets for the first round of games and we start in the East region with the number one overall seed the defending champion Connecticut Huskies now UConn a 26 and a half point favorite against the Hats of Stetson no interest in betting that game so let's instead go to the 8-9 matchup in this region with FAU made the uh the, the I can't say the words that you're expecting to hear here so the last four uh, it's a legal thing so FAU made the last four last year a two and a half point favorite here against North Western from the Big Ten. Now, you might look at this and say, oh my God, FAU made the last four last year. How could FAU not get to the second round this year? The answer, because FAU plays absolutely no defense. Great offensive team, absolutely no defense. I don't want a, a much to do with any of those teams coming up in this tournament. So let's play Northwestern plus the two and a half. And I think Northwestern wins this game outright, advances to the second round, where we'll get annihilated by UConn, but Northwestern plus the two and a half round one against FAU. We will also go to the 413 matchup in this region, where Auburn, the SEC tournament champion, a 12 and a half point favorite against Ivy League tournament champion, Yale. Now think about this. Doesn't it seem like every single year, the Ivy League champion, at the very least, plays really well in the first round game, if not pull an outright upset? If it feels like that's what usually happens, it's because it is what usually happens. How about Princeton last year, 15 seed beating Arizona, a two seed. So now we've got Yale, 12 and a half against Auburn with tournament choker, Bruce Pearl. I know he's been to a final four before, but usually not too great. Let's play Yale plus the 12 and a half. Absolutely love it. My favorite bet of the region, Yale plus the points against Auburn. And let's do one more here for best bets for round number one in the East region. Duquesne, winners of the A-10. They're awful, and I love BYU. BYU year one in the Big 12. BYU can shoot tons of threes. Duquesne doesn't play great defense. I think BYU names its score in this game, and BYU wins by double digits. Imagine going to Duquesne, much less betting on one of the guys here did. BYU laying it against Duquesne. Some best bets for the East region, round number one of the tournament. <laughs> All right, moving on to the West region now of the NCAA tournament. Best bets for the first round. And we're going to start with the 8-9 matchup. I'd like to take North Carolina, but we don't know who North Carolina is playing yet in the first round. So let's go to the 8-9 with Michigan. Oh my God, imagine you're Mississippi State. Like, nice regular season, decent performance in the SEC tournament, and your reward in the first round is Tom Izzo and Sparty. I mean, not great. You know what they say, January, February, Izzo, April. And Michigan State, despite being the low, the, uh, the higher seed here, a nine seed, a one and a half point favorite against Mississippi State. And let's, let's be honest, like I don't know if Michigan State's definitely going to win this game, but would you ever bet against Tom Izzo in the first round here? And if you're North Carolina, you got to be quaking in your boots about going into the second round to potentially see Michigan State and Tom Izzo in round number two. Let's not overcomplicate this. Let's make it really simple. Hashtag bet square, don't care. Give me Michigan State minus the one and a half to win and advance for the second round over Mississippi State. All right, the so 5-12 matchup here. I actually like, don't like a lot of the 12 seeds this year, but I do like Grand Canyon to cover the spread against St. Mary's. Grand Canyon, a really balanced team. And look, St. Mary's really impressive. Thumped Gonzaga in the, the, the conference tournament championship uh, last week. So St. Mary's had a really great regular season, but we've seen St. Mary's not be a great tournament team. And look, I, St. Mary's can definitely win this game, but do I think they win it by almost two possessions? I don't. So best bet number two coming up in the West region. Let's take Grand Canyon. It's a beautiful place. Grand Canyon plus the four and a half points against St. Mary's. And for the final best bet in the West region, Clemson is the sixth seed in this region. Clemson's not very good. Clemson, all offense, no defense. Teams like this generally don't perform that great in the tournament. New Mexico with Richard Pitino and the sons of a couple NBA players in the backcourt. I, I think odds makers know the deal here. New Mexico, despite being the 11 seed, is a two and a half point favorite here against Clemson. New Mexico wins this game. I think New Mexico can get to the regional semifinal. We'll take New Mexico minus the two and a half against Clemson in the 6-11 matchup. Best bets for the West region in the tournament. 
All right, continuing here on the board of spreads presented by BetMGM with the South region, with Houston as the number one seed in this region. Will they beat Longwood by 24 points? I don't know. They'll definitely beat them in advance to the second round. So we will move past that game, and let's go to this 5-12 matchup here with Wisconsin, the Big Ten tournament runners-up. They did upset Purdue in the semifinal this past weekend. Wisconsin, a four-and-a-half point favorite against the 12 seed, James Madison. Now, for people out there that don't know about James Madison, uh, my guess is you will know about James Madison. Madison by the time this game tips off. James Madison comes into the tournament with the most wins of any team that made the tournament. 31 wins. You know why? Because they're really good. And Wisconsin had a really nice run in the Big Ten tournament. Good start to the season and then a lull and then a nice finish. I don't like Wisconsin's defense. This is not like your father or your grandfather's Wisconsin team. I think James Madison will be able to score enough to at least cover the spread in this game, if not pull the outright upset. So best bet number one in this region, let's take James Madison plus the four and a half against Wisconsin. And we'll go only do one more best bet in this region. And look, this is a little health dependent. And we may not know until a little later in the week about the status of Marquette star guard, Tyler Kolek. And having Tyler Kolek for Marquette is the difference between potentially winning a national championship and getting bounced in like the second rounds of the tournament. That's how important Tyler Kolek is. We think that he's going to be good to go with his oblique injury and play starting in the first round game here against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. That is the expectation, but just, just make sure that you're monitoring this and that you know about Tyler Kolek's status. It matters a lot as you pick your bracket and you pick uh, your bets here for the first rounds of the tournament. Assuming Kolek plays, I love Marquette. I think Marquette is going to get to the national championship game. So I love Marquette. I love Shaka Smart. Assuming they have Kolek, and that means that I got to like Marquette covering the 13 and a half. Give me Marquette to beat Western Kentucky by two touchdowns in round number one. Two best bets for this region, the South region of the tournament. And wrapping up the best bets in the first round in the Midwest region here of the tournament. This region's really funny because the number one seed is a team that literally never gets over the hump in Purdue. And the number two seed is a team that literally never gets over the hump in Tennessee with Rick Barnes and Matt Painter. Will one of them get to the last four? I actually think one of them will. We'll tell you who it's going to be coming up in a little bit. But this is for best bets for the first round of the tournament. So let's give you a couple here. And let's start with Tennessee against St. Peter's. The Vols crashed early out of the uh, the SEC tournament. A 19 and a half point favorite against St. Peter's, who you re might remember as the tournament darlings a couple years ago, upsetting a number of Blue Blood schools on the way to the Elite Eight. Now, Shaheen Holloway, who was the coach of St. Peter's during that run, is now the coach of Seton Hall. This St. Peter's team is not that St. Peter's team. And Tennessee, despite obviously an early exit in the SEC tournament, Tennessee is one of the best teams in the country. Tennessee has one of the best players in the country in Dalton Connect, and he's going to connect Tennessee. It's a bit of a reach. Connect Tennessee to the second round here with a huge performance. Tennessee bounced back after the SEC tournament disaster. Give me the balls laying the 19 and a half against St. Peter's in the 2-15 game. How about this one? Really intriguing 5-12 matchup where McNeese State is going to be a team that a lot of people like and with good reason. McNeese State is awesome. Great statistical profile, great regular season. Gonzaga is the five seed here. I think people are a little bit down on Gonzaga. Lost in the uh, in their conference tournament championship game to St. Mary's. But I think this Gonzaga team is really good. And I think this game is on the knife edge big time here where maybe Gonzaga is able to win and maybe go on a little bit of a run. I mean, think about it. Purdue and Tennessee are the top two seeds in this region. Two coaches that are accustomed to tournament failure. So is it insane to think that this could be a year where Mark Few gets back to the final four? It could happen. I do like McNeese to at least keep the game close. Maybe Gonzaga wins, but I'll take McNeese plus the five and a half against Gonzaga in that particular matchup. And let's do South Carolina and Oregon, and then I want to do a couple seconds on Kansas and Samford. Now, I'm not going to claim to have a personal opinion on this game that's really like that that strong, but I can tell people that my co-host uh, on You Better You Bet, my show sponsored by BetMGM, Ken Barkley, absolutely loves the Oregon Ducks in this game. Good enough for him, good enough for me. Quack, quack, Dana Altman and Oregon taking down a pretty nondescript South Carolina team. Oregon laying the one and a half is an 11 seed over the six seed South Carolina. And I don't have a bet right now for this Kansas and Sanford game. Sanford plays buckyball. They, they take it up and down. They shoot a billion three. Sanford a seven and a half point dog against Kansas. A lot of people like Sanford here. Just keep in mind, Kansas' two best players, Hunter Dickinson, Kevin McCuller, both missed the Big 12 tournament game that Kansas lost to Cincinnati. They both might be back for this game. And if they're both back and they're both healthy, I'm going to like Kansas. If not, Maybe Sanford pulls the outright upset. Just keep that in mind before you bet this game or pick it in your bracket.